everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Anadonia. How the hell are you? So, just to get straight into it today, you see this pile of chest right here, the chest monster itself that's been growing and growing and growing for pretty much the entire season. Well, today is the day we get rid of all of this. Because if you remember in the last episode, we finally finished our ME storage upgrading. We have the full system in place now to completely uh, fill out. No, that's not the word I'm looking for. Definitely not the word I'm looking for. But we've got the infrastructure in place to essentially continuously expand the ME storage system ad infinitum with the highest tier of storage cell. And while those weren't the words I was looking for, it was the answer that I was looking for. But yeah, with just three drives, we already have, what, what, what is this? That's, that's uh, 16 million bytes per drive. 16 million times two, 32 million bytes of space waiting to be used. And by God, it's time we use it. And I figure that while we could set up some really advanced and complicated system to funnel all of this uh, automatically into the ME storage system, I have a better idea. And pop, and pop, and pop, and you kind of get the idea. Before I continue with this, there is one thing that I want to do that I really should have done a long time ago now. Guy the Sheep's remains have been stuck in this discarded chest basically since the series began, and I think it's time we put them back in their rightful place. Not buried outside of our home, though they that was the original place we put them. Guy's remains belong below where Guy is supposed to be, up here. And since, for some reason, the sheep is missing from the chair, from the throne, well, let's allow a part of him to continue living up here. Just like that. Ooh, now this one is gonna prove to be a bit of an issue, because all of these iron pickaxes, because they've got different enchantments on, they're gonna take up their own individual slots in the ME storage. That's gonna be a pretty big drain, now that I think about it. Holy crap, that's a lot of bread. How did we just forget this was here? God, this is gonna be old, moldy, and stale by now. You memorize a drawing of Lucernia? I've had a constellation paper for Lucernia in that chest the entire time. Are you kidding? So for those of you that don't follow Starsick, that's like one of the only constellations I have left that I just haven't discovered. Hold on, let me grab my tome. Yeah, Octanus. Fornax, Pelotrio, Horologium, Mineralis, Avariso, Avitas, Vicio, Armara, and Decidia. Where the f- Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna be thankful that I found that. I'm gonna have to trace that out later. Okay, you know what? I'm sick of doing this individually. Let's see what this does, shall we? This can't go bad at all. Oh my god, the frames, the frames. What is even Titan Forged? Wait a second, did we just run out of space? Is that what I'm seeing right here? I think we just ran out of space, which means this was a horrible time for me to choose to do that. Oh boy. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. I picked the worst time to do this. Let me grab another chest. Oh no. Please don't despawn. Please don't despawn. Please don't despawn. You know your frames are dying when you go into the machine room and you have a higher frame rate. Also, like, wow, just for scale comparison, you saw how many chests that was. Look how much stuff you can fit in these netherite barrels compared to, like, those chests. Genuinely, two barrels for all of that space. That's actually insane. Uh, but now we have the issue of, um... Somehow we filled the computer. And if that isn't an indicator of just how much crap we have, three 16 million storage cells was not enough. Three of them. Let's see if the system system has made any more while we've been like offline, because I'm pretty sure it runs while we're offline. Oh, bad luck. Nothing in there. These have none. 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 Why the hell does this have none? As well as this. This just feels like a bad idea waiting to happen, but if it helps the system, I mean... Oh, I'm starving to death. Lovely. Wait a second, hang on. How is it missing these? How is that the issue? Silicon. Silicon is the bottleneck. How 
the hell is silicon the bottleneck? It's a shame these things aren't affected by watches of flowing time. You know what? I think I might have found a better use for these other than just voiding them. In fact, you know what? I don't even need this giant snake. You know what I can use? Oh, I was gonna say the whimsy's returned, but I've still got to get it to here. Boo, boo! Right, there we go then. That's gonna help alleviate some of those issues. Now, whenever we get a uh, calculation process come here, instead of, um, you know, not being used and then being voided and just dying forever, they're gonna come along this conveyor belt here, where they will eventually come along here, and then we'll get launched all the way across the room onto this conveyor belt here and hopefully that should alleviate some of the stresses of the other systems. Unfortunately, however, in the time it took for me to do that, it still has not produced me a single one of these drives. So, we may be temporarily SOA. No, SOL is the correct term. Either way, we've done that front until they can actually produce us something we can use. So, I say we move on to goal two of today's session. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've we've cleared out the chest monster. This does not look like a chest monster. It is just temporary storage until we can get one of those hard drives in. But what good is a storage system that can only be accessed from certain parts of the base. I mean, we've got port one here, port two up there, port three down there, and that's it. If we're anywhere else in this base, we have no access to the ME system. For all intents and purposes, while we are out there, our storage is gone. Right? Which, when you're on the run from, you know, a planet-wide capitalist clone race that wants you dead, not great to be stranded without access to all of your stuff. So, we have the option of either running a bunch of cabling along this base and setting up different access points everywhere, or we can go the route I was going a while ago and we, we can make it all wireless. I mean, we already have a wireless access terminal. It's just not linked to anything. And uh, if we were to link this, uh, which would require us, I believe, to go up to the controller, uh, which is up here, and right-click the brain. No, that, that still doesn't do it either. Uh, hmm, I may have forgotten how to do this, hang on. Okay, yeah, so I was right, I had completely forgotten what I was doing. But now I know, so, uh... Let's take the first step, shall we? So the first thing I'm actually gonna need in order to set up a wireless ME system uh, and link the terminal to the system uh, is a security terminal. Now, a security terminal, pretty easy to craft, all things considered. Four iron, two cables, a 16K storage component, an engineering processor, and an ME chest. And an ME chest is... Cables and a terminal on top of... Okay, we've got most of this stuff. Ooh, the cores, right. Okay, I've made these before. You guys have seen me make these. So, yeah. All I'm going to need is some Fluix dust. That seems simple enough. Right, I'm going to craft this, and then I'll get back to you. Just got to steal that, sadly. There we go. Nearly forgot to start talking again. The ME security terminal. Right then, so, the thing we've got to do with this, we've got to go plug it into the actual system, which is up here, and then... Is it going to come online? There we go! Yes, it is brilliant! Now, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff, because I don't know what any of this stuff does, so there's no reason to worry about it. That's totally the right attitude to have. Uh, but what we need to care about is this slot here. You see, if we put the terminal up here and into here, that has now linked this terminal to the system. If I right click with it, it'll say device is low on power. That wasn't what I thought it was going to say. I thought it was going to give us a different error, but this is as good as any time to show you that this thing needs charging. We can just sort of plug it on here uh, for now. So, all we're going to do, drop this in here, and it should start charging. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so these things are freakishly irritating in that you can't charge them from the back, even though it looks like that'd be the perfect point to do it with. You have to charge it from either the top or the bottom, which is the issue that I had with the original uh, mass charger. So if we stick that there, there we go, it connects now, so I can actually just plug this in. And that should be instantly charged. Nope, that's only on 0.2%. How interesting. Well, let's leave that to do its thing, and while it does its thing, let's make the next thing, I'm saying that word a lot, that we need, which hopefully should just be the wireless charger, not receiver. Is it receiver? No, wireless access point. Here we go, which requires a wireless receiver. Um, 
Now, the reason I'm saying hopefully uh, will hopefully not need to be explained, but uh, if it does need to be explained, then we'll find out uh, later. I've got to make this now, so let's do that. And there we go, the ME wireless access point. So let's grab that. And before we run off to do anything else, let's also make a few more of these Fluix cables because I have a feeling that we're going to need them. Right, well, it isn't the most ideal of positions, but I'm pretty sure I can put this on top of here. Yeah, there we go, device online. Right then, so, by right-clicking this, I should now see this uh, screen right here. It says range 16 meters, or, you know, 16 blocks, energy usage 8 AE per tick, which means every tick it's using 8 energy. Well, let me just double check this is on its own separate system. It is good because uh, this is really going to start draining the more we upgrade this because if we type in at applied energistics and we look for specifically uh, none of those. Where are you? Here we go. Wireless boosters. If we make 64 of these, we can bump that range up exponentially until it hits about 512 blocks. Now, I never did the math, but I don't know how big this base is. And because I don't know how big this base is, I have no idea if 512 blocks will be enough to cover the entire span of our base. If it is, that's brilliant, you know? If it isn't, however, it means we're going to have to either run cabling all the way to where it needs to be across this base, or we're going to need to start quantum entangling. And if we're going to have to start doing that, oh, that's going to be very tiring. But it will be done if it needs to be. Either way, in order to make those cards, if we just check, it requires the use of Fluix Dust and Ender Dust. Now, Ender Dust and Fluix Dust are pretty easy to get. Ender dust we have an infinite supply of. Fluix dust, however, we are running low on crystals, I believe. Yeah, we only have two left up here, so we're going to have to make quite a few more of these. Right, then we have enough dust and stuff for the wireless boosters for all 64. In fact, judging from the looks of it, we have enough for 128. Uh, but what we don't have is enough Surtis Quartz in the system. Never mind we do, it was just being lazy for some reason. There we go, we've got a stack and two. And you know what? Nah, let's not waste the rest of it because we could use that for something else in the future. But if we come on up to the wireless receiver once again, like we originally planned, we can drop these cards into the receiver, like so. And as you can see, it takes 4.1 thousand a per tick but we now have a range of 528 uh meters or blocks so i guess now it's our job now that this thing is full to just go around our base and see where we can and cannot pick up a wireless signal so can we pick one up out here yeah we can i wonder how many blocks in this direction it'll take before we stop being able to pick up a signal oh we're out of range here. How close do we have to be? Ooh, just on the boundary, maybe? Wait, what? We can't already be out of range. So we can we can grab it here, right on the very edge of the mountain. But here? No? Yes? Maybe? Wait, is it height-based? Oh, you know what? It might be height-based. Hang on. Yeah, if we're too high up, we can't reach. For example, we can't reach here. Maybe if we get higher, no. If we get lower, maybe. This is a really strange system. So for example, we can't reach it here, but if we go up here, we can? No? But we used to be able to get it here. What changed? Nothing changed. All I did was land. That's really buggy. Okay, well, we know we can at least get it in that direction. The question is, can we get it over here? If we just drop down. Yeah, we can get it here. That's good, we can get it here. What about the very far side of our base? Okay, we can't quite reach it here. Can we reach it over by this monstrosity? No. Can we reach it by Dr. Phil's house? Can't reach it by Phil's house. Can we reach it by the shack? We can't even reach it by the... Wait, we can? Okay, that's really buggy. We can reach it by the shack, though. Which is good. We can reach it from the shack. Uh, but the fact that we can't reach this all the way around our base means that we're going to need to learn how to quantum entangle. And I'm running out of time for today, so I think what I'm going to do, since we got the success of actually being able to use the wireless terminal, don't get me wrong, this is a brilliant step forward in terms of what we need to do. Uh, but since uh, I'm running out of time for today, I'm going to go, and then I'll come back in the morning. Uh, and I'll I'll look at this with a f with a fresh set of eyes because this is brilliant, but it needs to be better. Right then, I'm back and it's day two, 
of uh, this session. This is the first time I've ever done a multi-day session. But I was right. We are going to have to start quantumly entangling things. And while that sounds complicated, it's not necessarily complicated. It's just going to be very time-consuming. Let me show you what we're going to need. Oh, that's concerning. Why is the system offline? You're out of power? You're that draining? I mean, I guess I should have seen this coming, but Christ, these things store... 32,000 FE, and it was drained in one night? That's not good. We've got the same issues with these as we have with these. They drain too quickly. We need capacitors, or just better solar panels, or better yet, just not solar panels. We need something that won't go out during the night. This thing is a vampire for power. 4.1 thousand energy per tick, and this is generating 1,000 energy per tick. We'd need four of these just to keep up with its tickly suction. Do we even have any more of these solar panels? I... I can't check because the system's offline. Alright, let's take this offline for now. So that we can actually get some charge back in the goddamn system. Solar... Panels. Ah, uh, we've only got these. We only have up to tier 3 photovoltaic cells? I could have sworn we had just some lying around. There's no way I've used them all already. Guess I've got to make some more. Wait a second, the photovoltaic cells have an EMC value. Even if the solar panels themselves don't, surely I would have- sure, Surely I would have EMC'd those, right? Okay, I need quartz, the cell type 3, glowstone, diamond, and blazing coating. Get a whole stack of those, drop one in here. All we need now are the previous tiers of solar panel, and we need four stacks of these, which require four stacks of the previous tier, which require four stacks of the previous tier, which require four stacks of the previous tier, which requires... Oh, God, eight stacks of the previous tier? Are you kidding? Sixteen. Sixteen tier sixes. Let's go lay them out. Okay, sticking in all of those wireless boosters and looking at the cabling, it does appear as if we have enough power. Yeah, so, generation, 2000 FE a tick. At 100% light level, all of these combined together, it is enough to give us a backlog of power, which means we are gaining power faster than we're losing it. The real test starts at midnight when we have no sun. But until that time comes, time to actually get on with the quantum entanglement that I was, you know, supposed to be doing about 25 minutes ago. So, before we get started on anything to do with quantum entanglement, we're gonna first need something known as a matter condenser. Okay, now it's a very cheap recipe to make if we just get this crap out of the, out of the thing. Let's, uh, give me some glass. Where's the, where's the glass? There we go. That's... Not it, chief. There we go. Matter condenser. It's a very cheap item, and I believe it only needs to be plugged into the ME system, not any sort of power. Yeah, there we go. So the next thing we're going to need to plug into this matter condenser is a... Uh, the, 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 um, the 64K. Now, this thing here is an energy bar, as you can see, stored energy zero of zero. So what I'm thinking, since I haven't used this before, what I'm thinking is that it burns them up, it uses them. In which case, uh, we might have to put all of this on hold temporarily because we're gonna need to siphon off the 64K storage drives, these things here, and they've been stolen already, give me that. Now, if I put this up here, it's going to, yeah, there we go, stored energy zero of, 131072, uh, 131,072. Uh, let's, oh, crap, okay, so, just to, just to, just to explain, the matter condenser can be used to do multiple things. One of them is just destroy items. It can just void things, right? That's a thing that it can do. It can also create matter balls, which are like paint pellets, and I don't actually know what they do. And then you can condense things into a singularity, which requires 256,000 items to be pumped into here. So, for example, if I chuck in, what's something cheap that I can waste? Dirt. Let me, let me grab some dirt. We've got 7,777 dirt in the ME system. If I just chuck a stack in here. Yeah, there we go. Stored energy, 64 of 131,000. Um, and I'm guessing that all just got thrown into the, uh, you know, uh, 16k thing? I, I don't know how this works. Let me, let me just, 
let me just plug something into this to feed it infinite dirt. Hang on. Okay, so that is now pumping dirt infinitely into the matter condenser. I don't particularly like the fact that I'm doing this in the stairwell, but apparently this is the place I've chosen to do it. So all I'm going to do basically is I'm, I'm just going to sit here and watch and wait until this fills up. Um, and then I'll get back to you on what the hell it does. Yep, it is night time and ooh, with a generation of zero. Is the backlog gonna be enough? Because it's tearing through the thousands more than every second. This is being used one da da da, two da da da, three da da da. That's like eight or nine thousand a second. I don't think that's gonna be enough. Oh, watch it, 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 watch it. Here it comes. I'm never gonna be able to get over how satisfying this is. Yoink. It's only on 24,000. We need two of these, I'm pretty sure. Alright, let's, uh... Let's take a different approach here. Actually, you know what? No, we can use the same approach. Hang on. As much as I love these watches of flow in time, we don't actually need these anymore. And I mean, if we just take a look at what's inside all of these condensers, the only ones that are really even running at the minute are these ones that are completely full. This one that's completely full. This one that's surprisingly not as full as you might expect. This one that's not got anything in. This one that's not got anything in. This one that's not got anything in. And the important ones, the rest of them, have already been taken. Right then, time for you to find out what chaos truly means. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's going through much quicker now. That's going by at about a thousand a second. So this, this, this is, um... This itself is chaos, but this, this is good. This is good. It's full on stored energy. There is nothing left to store. So, where is my singularity? I'm not seeing my singularity. Where is it? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm owed a singularity, guys. So do I just, what do I, what do I, that just reset it. And I can't burn it. What, so I, did, did I just do all of that for no reason? Right, so no, I did everything right. That should have given me a singularity. I, I, why did you not give me a singularity? That's not funny. It's really not funny. Why? 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 The many a ways one can p pontificate upon why. Okay, well, while that refuses to do its, you know, basic job of giving me stuff, let's move on to the next part of quantum entanglement. So as you already know, the wireless access point, we can have a range of 528 uh, meters or blocks in any one direction from this wireless access point. It's like a sphere, a three-dimensional sphere that's 512 blocks round, right? Well, obviously, unless you want to run cabling all across your base, you're gonna have to set up these quantum, these quantum rings. Now they're very expensive, or at the very least they're not expensive, but they require a lot of stuff. And the way it works is you plug them into the ME system, you put a singularity inside of them, you quantumly entangle a singularity, and you put it inside of the quantum link chamber, which resides at the center of the quantum rings. And what you can do is you can pair those two together. What that allows you to do is across any amount of distance, have another sort of link, I guess, for your ME system. It's not that it acts as an, uh, as an infinite booster for the wireless range. It just allows you to put down another wireless communicator an infinite amount of blocks away. However, comma, you still have to run cabling from the quantum ring. And in the event that you still can't cover your whole base, which I'm going to guess we have considering how big our base is, um, you come across another issue, that being that you'd have to set up a second pair of quantum entangled rings. 
or run more cable across your base. So it's no secret at this point that after season two of Anadonia is over, uh, we're planning on changing things around a bit. If you're seeing this video at all, it means that we put up the sort of, ooh, Anadonia is changing, blah, 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 big video, right? Alongside starting to upload these again. And in that video, it explains that we're just sort of not enjoying the series anymore in its current state, just because the mod pack is really bad and the server is really bad not because it's a bad server but because it can't handle how unstable the mod pack is and all around our enjoyment is going down now obviously we don't want to just broadcast ourselves to you when we're not enjoying what we're doing so i've come to a bit of a compromise since this system isn't working and since i really don't want to have to run cabling all throughout my base just to set up these wireless access points <laughs> And because the quantum entanglement does so little for what it actually is, I'm going to do something called a bit of a bibbidi bobbidi boo And uh, I'm, I'm going to install a new mod, and I will be right back. Yeah, so we are back, obviously, as you can see. And while I've been gone, I managed to <laughs> install a mod that should give us a... Uh, I believe it's called a, a booster card? or at least a different type of booster card. Here we go. AE Infinity Booster, an infinity range booster, which requires three netherite, three wireless booster cards, two eyes of ender, and a nether star, which in a normal playthrough would be a very challenging thing to come across. However, comma, let me just grab three of these. And hmm, I wonder how many of these we're going to need. And there we have it, an infinity range booster. Um, now, I believe this actually is supposed to work interdimensionally as well, but if not, that will give us a reason to actually use this if it starts working. Um, but if we just slot this into the wireless access point, how much energy does this require? Because, I mean... Uh, standard energy usage is about 5,000 AE per tick, I believe. One of these is just 9 AE a tick. <laughs> That's such BS. <laughs> I mean, come on. If it's this broken, at least make it, like, drain all of those instantly. Oh, I'm not complaining, but also I do wish it was a little more serious about that. But yeah, so the range is 9.223372036854776 3E17M uh, or blocks. Um and basically what that means is I can use this anywhere. There is there is no limit to how far away I can go. Uh, apparently it's supposed to be a little buggy just because obviously that's not a real number. Uh, but I should be able to just access this anywhere now, which is really nice. It's exactly what I was looking for. We can now access our entire base's inventory, or at least nearly our entire base's inventory, from anywhere on the map. Obviously, we're still having storage issues, just because apparently 16 million slots doesn't mean 16 million slots. It means 63 slots that can take up to 16 million blocks in them. Uh, which is slightly irritating, but, you know, that's just how things work sometimes. But, I mean, looking at things from uh, a, a, a session sort of perspective, we're basically done. I mean, we've not fully solved the storage issue, because obviously we, we still have a lot of stuff to put in here, but all it is now is waiting, because we have the system set up, we can access it from anywhere, we've just got to wait for the drives. Although I suppose there is one thing we could do, one thing that I've wanted to do for a while. This is meant to be the computer room, and yet there is only, well, the computer and a single drive bay. What I want to do, I want to fill up both of these walls, kind of like where the chests are, with ME drives. So let's have a look at what it takes to make a, a drive... Oh, excuse me, a drive bay. Just engineering processes, huh? After what has to have been at least... 45 minutes, we now have a stack of engineering processes. Let's bippity boppity boo these out of the table, and we get a total of 21 because we ran out of cables. But you know what? 21 is a good start. So, since obviously we still don't have the space to actually empty these out and shove them in the computer yet, let's just use the other side to start off with. So, let's just add a row after a row of these drives onto the wall. And then I'm actually gonna have to temporarily take the wireless 
receiver offline for the moment alongside this entire drive as well uh, because I want to move them over here, obviously. I was about to say from there we can make some Fluix cables <laughs> so that we can plug it into the system. <laughs> However, comma, <laughs> I forgot to craft them first, so I can't actually... Uh, connect the system together. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure we do have the items needed to craft them outside of the terminal. Yeah, all we need is quartz fiber, and I'm pretty sure we have some of that in here. Do we really not? Okay, well, at least we have the tools necessary to make the quartz fiber. There we go. That should be enough cables to connect the uh, drives back into the system. Wait, does that not count? Do they have to all be connected? I thought they counted as like quasi-connectivity. I thought I could like plug them all into each other. Oh. Crap. Well, the good news is I should be able to just take all of these drives and plug them in here. There we go, we've got all of our stuff back now. I guess these don't work via quasi-connectivity, which means I'm actually gonna have to run cabling through all of these somehow, probably around the back, now that I think about it. But yeah, with that final thing done, I'm happy to call this session here. We've got a lot done, and I'm starving to death. But yeah, we've got a lot done for the ME system. I mean, we've made it completely wireless. We can access it from anywhere. We've upgraded the amount of drive space we have. All we need now is to wait for the drives on that front. We've majority cleared out the chest monster. There are only two netherite barrels left to actually clean up. I think I'm going to just AFK here for a couple of hours, to be honest. I'm going to put some Family Guy funny moments on, just tab out, make sure I'm in a safe place, and just wait for it to start building me stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it for this session, so um, if you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and make sure to subscribe to show me that you uh, want to see more, I guess. And uh, yeah, in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. Oh wow, that was not the button I meant to press. Anyway, see you guys later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye.